This episode is sponsored by Custom Inc. Custom Inc. brings people together with custom gear from employees and customers to teammates and friends. At their easy to use website, you can create personalized custom gear, including water bottles, backpacks, polos, jackets, and so much more. And it's all backed by a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Get started today. Visit customink.com. That's customink.com. Here's what Pittsburgh is talking about. In the last few weeks, Governor Josh Shapiro has sat courtside at a Sixers game and cheered on the Eagles at the Super Bowl. And being a booster for Pennsylvania sports is a big part of the gig. But who's paying for these tickets? And when is a gift to a public official not technically a gift? It's Monday, March 20th. I'm Megan Harris, and this is CityCast Pittsburgh. I'm with Stephen Caruso. He's the Capitol reporter for Spotlight PA. Stephen, thanks so much for making time. Thanks for having me. Uh, so let's just get this out of the way. Shapiro is a Philly stan, I guess. I think that makes sense. He grew up in Montgomery County. What do you think? Should Pittsburgh be jealous? Uh, you know, I think that there is a lovely tradition of this state, uh, both sides of it, hating each other's sports teams. So I, you know, I will leave that to the good people of Pittsburgh, though, for what's worth. I, uh, you know, I went to school in Pittsburgh. So if forced to choose, I'm usually going to go with the western side of the state. <laughs> what about Shapiro? He's got a little bit of a history, at least for the Sixers. Yes. Um, Josh Shapiro as attorney general, uh, if you look at his forms that he has to file, his statements of financial interest, uh, he's actually been to a couple of uh, Sixers games in the past. Also, he did go to one Penguins game, if I'm remembering correctly. So he said he spent some love to Western Pennsylvania. And, you know, it, I think also like, you know, I was at his inauguration, the uh, the Sixers band played there. They have a like a drum line uh, and, and there was a giant dance floor that was a basketball court. So, yes, Josh Shapiro certainly really likes his basketball. <laughs> it's a good time of year for him then. Um, the tickets to this game that you reported about, how did he get those? So the game I reported on, you know, I mentioned these statements of financial interest that all elected officials have to file. Uh, yeah. I, it, that, it wasn't on this. It was uh, I was sent a video that showed Shapiro clearly sitting courtside with um, someone who multiple sources uh, described as, and, and no one no one told me wasn't, uh, Darren Check, a, a top donor for Shapiro. He's a lawyer from outside of Philly as well. And uh, a longtime donor, I should say, has donated to Shapiro ever since his first run for uh, state office. So the way the campaign phrased it when I approached him about it was that this was a campaign contribution, that the tickets were sort of part of him, his run for governor. But, you know, the tickets were for a January game this January. So mm -hmm. well after the election. Uh, and the way they framed it was like, oh, he was meeting, he was doing campaigning, he was meeting with voters, he was meeting with a campaign donor. So this is just a campaign contribution. And that's the way we're going to report it. And that's how it will show up. Obviously, you're not on his ticket master. But do you have an estimate as to how much a courtside seat at the Sixers costs? Yeah, roughly uh, $3,000 each. That's just if you take the season tickets and divide it by games. But smart. <laughs> secondary market, secondary market could be even more. Interesting. Uh, well, so as you say, his team called this a political meeting, not a campaign contribution. Those are like the rules around them are so murky. There's gifts and there's in-kind contributions. So can you walk us through those, like how they work? Like if folks aren't giving money to a candidate, what can they give? Yeah, so a lot of this is murky because our laws are kind of murky. But the, right. the, the best way to describe it is that, like, campaigns can get lots of things from people. You know, the one we think of is just a big check that has some comically large number on it. But, uh, you know, you also can just give a campaign uh, – Say so you rent them office space or you don't even rent them. Like uh, if you if you rent them at, at a discount or you just say you don't have to pay me rent, this office is yours for the next three months to run your campaign out of. That's a contribution. If um, you print a T-shirt that says vote Shapiro and then to say, oh, you can have these for free. That's a campaign contribution. Uh, if you provide catering to the Shapiro campaign for an event uh, and just say, oh, 
you know, it's on us because we like you. That's a campaign contribution. So there's a lot of ways to sort of also provide things to campaigns. Uh, and, and it's pretty common. Shapiro received uh, a good number of these. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but, you know, it, it's something you see in particular for like fundraising expenses. And campaign contributions like monetary ones or in kind like food or ads or office supplies, those all have to be listed in a campaign finance report, right? And those come out, you know, throughout the year. Yes, correct. So, you know, the changes is how often they come out. Like when Shapiro was actively running a campaign last year, he had to put out about seven of them, uh, all told, uh, before and after elections. And now, though, that he's going to be entering a year where he's not running, his most recent campaign report is going to come out at the end of uh, 2023. Uh, you know, so and then that's that's opposed to gifts. So like a gift is basically just described as something that's not a campaign contribution under state law. It doesn't matter who gives it to you. But that's like the one thing that's like crystal clear in our state law is that if something is a campaign contribution, it is not a gift. Uh, otherwise, you look at these statements of financial interest, which are filed by all elected officials. So I'm not talking about Josh Shapiro right here. But you know, you'll see people who get the sports tickets are a big one, trips to the Bahamas, uh, membership to exclusive clubs. And those gifts, oftentimes they're from lobbyists, but they're not exclusively. Those are only reported once a year. And, and actually, there's a, about a whole year delay. Like the report for 2023 won't be filed until 2024. Golly. So I want a trip to the Bahamas. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? This episode is brought to you by Blizzard. Play Diablo 4 free during the open beta weekend. Only you can stand in the way of the forces of hell. Play free March 24th to 26th and pre-purchase for early access. Journey through the entire first act. Battle up to level 25 as all five classes. Adventure with your friends in four-player co-op. Descend into hell early during the open beta. Pre-purchase Diablo 4 now. So these basketball tickets normally probably would have been reported as gifts, but in this case, they were listed as an in-kind contribution. What is Shapiro or his administration saying about all this? I think, you know, they're just saying, you know, he was at a political meeting. That's what it is. Uh, I have talked to some people who were scratching their head at that because, you know, look, the campaign has been run. Uh, Shapiro won. He doesn't have to actively campaign. I mean, you can make an argument that, like, campaigning never stops, like, uh, I think Josh Shapiro is a consummate campaigner. He understands like what it takes to win a statewide race. Like he was a prodigious fundraiser. You know, he he raised a, a record sending amount of money. Like, you know, that's not going to stop just because his next election is is three years away. But uh, I think for other political operatives in both parties, they looked at this. They were just like, I mean, this is a gift. Uh, but it just gets at how murky <laughs> that like because our state law doesn't really have a lot of mechanisms to to like enforce this it's it's a complaint driven process for both our ethics commission which would be the ones that would like slap a hand and say no this was a gift or the department of state who uh collect the campaign finance they only enforce things if someone files a complaint and as far as i know no one has yet over this uh over these tickets is there any like broad entity that is looking at these to you know maybe like occasionally take a review of major elected officials and be like you know what maybe we should file a complaint or is it all just self policed? It's it's mostly self policed and, and that kind of you know <laughs> an, an, an opponent could file a complaint or someone who wants to ding Shapiro like we've seen this before uh, during the 2022 Republican primary one of the Republican candidates uh, filed a complaint against Doug Mastriano the the eventual GOP candidate for some discrepancies that had been on his campaign finance reports like because uh, he filed a revision that led to a bunch of money appearing and and. I think that's something that all everyone would be like scratching their head at, but it, it, the local DA was just like, I I don't know if there's grounds here for me to do anything because like, you know, it, our laws as one GOP operative told me is the, are the wild west. Like it, it, there's just sort of this general acceptance that this is the way we run campaigns under the current law and everyone's kind of cool with it. Has this come up before with, you know, previous governors um, in the recent history or, you know, like the way that they deal with registered lobbyists, for example, or if someone has a contract with the state? Yeah. So, uh, you know, kind of like piggybacking, we did the story on the Sixers tickets. And you also mentioned Shapiro went to the Super Bowl. His tickets 
for the Super Bowl were paid for by this group known as Team PA, uh, who are a nonprofit. And I won't bore your listeners with all the details, but like <laughs> I, I bring them up because Team PA has paid for travel for previous governors, in particular Tom Corbett was was dinged on uh, his trips abroad. Tom Wolf. The, uh, Shapiro's predecessor instituted a gift ban, according to like people who are close to him, mostly because Tom Corbett, there were a couple of stories that came out about him going to Europe, spending a yachting weekend with a, a big uh, natural gas industry. <laughs> I forgot executive. about that. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, also like going to sporting events. I think he was at like the NHL Winter Classic in Pittsburgh. Uh, so, you know, I, I think Wolf's, Wolf's really strict gift ban, which basically said mm, the Outsiders can pay for nothing. You must reimburse everything. Like even a bottle of water and an event if it was a 90 degree day. That was the story everybody loved to use. That would have to be reimbursed like out of pocket. We can just hand the person two bucks or maybe three bucks of inflation now. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, you know, so so we have seen this. And I think even going back further, like I, I feel like there's this line that Pennsylvania has among the most corrupt governments. People like to say that in our state politics. So in some ways, like I'm not, I'm not saying this to give the governor a pass. But I am saying like there's this long tradition, and and also I should say the legislature, uh, you know, there's there's no gift ban on them. They can take whatever they want. <laughs> well, and looking ahead a little bit, one half of our state is celebrating their March Madness bids. Um, it's been a long, long time since our friends in Philly won't be represented, but the Sixers are third in the East and on pace for a playoff spot. Um, we know Shapiro loves to ball. What are the odds that this is going to come up again in the coming weeks? <laughs> I will wait till I get a tip. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know, though I will I will just note uh, I, I, too, would love to be able to see either the Sixers or Pitt play in a game. But that is not a request for anyone to send me free tickets. <laughs> Fair enough. Stephen Caruso is the Capitol reporter for Spotlight PA. Stephen, thank you so much for your great reporting. Thanks for having me. Here's a little more news before you go. U.S. Steel is on the hook for $300,000 in air pollution fines for violations at Clareton Coke Works. If you're new to town, Coke is a raw material in the steelmaking process. And yes, we still make some. The Clareton plant is a notorious source of air pollution emissions, by far the worst in our area, and they're planning to permanently close a portion of the facility that they say should reduce some of those emissions. But this is not a new problem. Clareton was fined more than $9 million last year alone. And when you're waiting for a bus that never comes, it can feel like public transit is kind of a joke, but a local bus is bringing a different type of comedy to Pittsburgh transportation. The Berg bus will take riders on a tour throughout the city while comedians perform sets right in front of you. The transportainment is BYOB and has both PG-13 and R-rated tours. We'll have a link to them in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're liking the show, please recommend us to someone. I know I get all my best podcast recommendations from friends, um, so we always appreciate it when folks do that for us. Leave us a review, give us five stars, and make sure you're subscribed to our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. We'll talk to you soon. Like Wolf, he took over the office from someone who there was a uh, air of 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 uh, Ka- uh, Kath- Kathleen Kane, who was uh, later uh, convicted of perjury and obstruction of justice. Yes, thank you. Uh, You're welcome. So, uh, <laughs> that was, Shapiro- that one was hard to forget. <laughs> <laughs>